Unit 3, Section 2, Potential Risks of Biotechnology. In the previous section, we looked at the potential benefits of biotechnology. Now we have to look at the flip side of the coin and see what the risks may be. And biotechnology is not without risks. Uh, some potential issues include unintended consequences. Um, and it seems that most of the risks of biotechnology fall under this heading. Unintended consequences or unforeseen consequences or unanticipated consequences, etc., are things that happen due to purpose, purpose of action by humans and which are not intended to happen. Okay, essentially the idea is that biological and ecological systems are so interconnected and complex that we can't anticipate all of the consequences that our actions will have when we begin modifying such systems. Um, as an example, the introduction of alien species often has unforeseen and undesirable consequences. Rosa multiflora, called many flowered rose, Japanese rose, baby rose, was introduced to the U.S. as a means of erosion control. In the eastern half of the country, it's now considered a major pest in both natural areas and pastures. Kudzu was also introduced as an erosion control plant and soil builder since it's a legume, and it has since become a noxious weed. Uh, this slide shows kudzu vine. Um, it grows so quickly that it, that it simply overwhelms and kills native plants by shading them. It's not a parasite. It doesn't suck nutrients out of the plants. It doesn't strangle the plants as such, um, you know, damaging their vascular system. It simply grows so quickly that it casts so much shade on the existing plants that they die. And it has no natural enemies in the United States. Uh, unintended consequences. We look at some specific risks of GMOs or genetically modified organisms. Biotech organisms may produce new proteins, which could be allergenic, or have other health effects. Um, what's meant by this is um, all genes do, the only thing that genes do is code for the production of protein. And genes interact. So one gene may code for the production of a certain protein, but that gene in combination with another gene may uh, cause a different protein to be produced. And we can't know ahead of time when splicing genes into organisms in which those genes uh, weren't originated, we can't know what interactions between those genes are going to happen and what proteins may be produced. And while a gene can be spliced into an organism, into an organism's DNA, exactly where it's inserted into the DNA can't yet be controlled. And since, as I mentioned, genes affect the expression of other genes, it's currently impossible to know whether inserting a gene will have any effect on another gene. And we currently do not know the long-term effects of GMOs on humans, people that consume these GMOs, and some effects may be subtle, but serious over time or over generations. Uh, also, uh, gene transfer may occur between genetically modified organisms and organisms in the wild, which would revert, result in irreversible changes in the ecosystem. Uh, Roundup Ready. Roundup is a non-selective broad-spectrum herbicide from Monsanto. Non-selective means it kills both monocots and dicots, both narrow-leaf plants and broad-leaf plants. Broad-spectrum means it kills a huge variety of plants. 
Monsanto has introduced crops that are unaffected by Roundup and which they call and market as Roundup Ready. Farmers could plant <coughs> pardon, a Roundup Ready crop and use a single herbicide to control all the weeds, whether monocot or dicot. It results in time and money savings for farmers. However, some weeds have proven to be resistant to Roundup, and as more and more Roundup was used due to the Roundup Ready crops, these weeds become more and more resistant and now require different herbicides, often more toxic than Roundup, to control them. And that defeats the purpose of Roundup Ready crops. We now have to apply, in some cases, more than one herbicide to a crop. Bt corn. The Bt and Bt corn stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a soil bacteria naturally occurring that makes a protein which is lethal to larval insects. <clears throat> and not all larval insects, but the caterpillar stage uh, of insects. Uh, some insects don't go through that stage and Bt is uh, toxin, uh, doesn't affect that. Bt toxin also has little to no effect on anything that isn't a caterpillar. So it's actually quite safe, um, considered quite safe for use around humans and pets and that sort of thing. Um, and there are many other Bt crops, uh, not just corn, but tomatoes, cotton, and others. Scientists have inserted the genes from the bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis, into corn plants, causing the corn to make the Bt toxin. The corn now makes that protein without the bacteria being present. And so essentially the corn makes its own insecticide, insecticide, reducing or eliminating the need for the farmer to spray insecticides on the corn. Several studies, however, have shown that the pollen from Bt corn is toxic to monarch butterfly larvae, and that the pollen can drift from corn fields and coat the leaves of milkweed plants, which are the only plant monarch butterfly caterpillars eat. Um, more study is needed to definitively say how much this can affect the monarch population, but obviously uh, there should be some concern. There are also concerns about Bt toxin uh, itself. Um, when a population of organisms is exposed to a toxin, a certain percentage of those organisms will have some amount of increased resistance to the toxin as opposed to the population in general. We talked about that in Unit 1 with resistance to insecticides and herbicides. When organisms are repeatedly exposed to a toxin, the population naturally shifts to include more and more of the resistant organisms, since the non-resistant organisms are killed. This results in the rapid evolution of a highly resistant population. There have been documented surges in the populations of sucking insects which aren't affected by Bt toxin in areas where Bt cotton is grown. This means that these insects uh, could be uh, also feeding on plants other than cotton. And if in the past they've been able to be controlled by spraying with Bt, uh, they may not be able to be controlled that way. This is just a photo micrograph of uh, the crystals of the protein from uh, that form Bt toxin. Genetically modified organisms. Um, the sections that we looked at on Roundup Ready crops and Bt corn can provide examples of genetically modified organisms or GMOs. GMOs are organisms, plants, animals, bacteria, whatever, that have had their DNA manipulated in some way, often by splicing in DNA from a completely different type of organism. Bt corn is made by splicing the genes from a soil bacteria into the DNA of corn, causing that corn to produce the Bt toxin. Roundup Ready crops are made by splicing in genes from organisms such as other species of plants or from bacteria that make those organisms resistant to Roundup herbicide. And there are numerous other examples of uh, genetically modified organisms or GMOs um, 
that have had their DNA manipulated. Food labels and GMOs. At present, there are no U.S. laws requiring foods containing genetically modified organisms to be labeled as such. As a result, the consumer has no way of determining whether what they're eating contains GMOs. Companies creating GMOs spend millions of dollars each year to try to ensure that no such labeling laws are passed. Do the foods you eat contain GMOs? If you eat anything containing corn, soybeans, canola, cotton, or sugar beets, or products made from these, such as corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil, high fructose corn syrup, or table sugar, the chances are nearly 100% that you eat GMOs on a daily basis. In March of 2013, Whole Foods became the first major U.S. grocery chain to require labeling of all foods containing GMOs by 2018. Plant patents. One of the things that isn't in any of the definitions of biotechnology we've looked at is the concept of plant patents. The United States Patent and Trademark Office says this about patent law and plants. The law also provides for the granting of a patent to anyone who has invented or discovered and asexually reproduced any distinct and new variety of plant, including cultivated sports, mutants, hybrids, and newly found seedlings, other than a tuber propagated plant or a plant found in an uncultivated state. A plant patent is granted for a period of 20 years from the date of the application or earlier if the patent was, is referenced than 20 years from the date when the earliest such patent was filed. Plant variety protection. A little different here. The plant patents cover only plants that are propagated asexually, that is by um, cuttings or splitting the, the uh, organism um, dividing, that sort of thing. If a new plant variety is created through breeding, which is sexual propagation, or it's a tuber, you can't get a plant patent. But protection can be obtained for the variety through the United States Plant Variety Protection Office under the jurisdiction of the USDA rather than the Patent Office. The term of protection is 20 years, the same as for a patent. So what are the benefits of plant patents? Well, plant patents and plant variety protection allow pr the protection holder exclusive rights to the sale of the plant or products of the plant. Now, the plant may be licensed to other growers who then pay a royalty to the protection holder. Doesn't mean that the protection holder is the only one who can grow it. It means that they're the only ones who can grow it outside of them licensing someone else. This allows companies and individuals to expend the money and energy necessary to create new varieties and then be able to recoup the expenditures and possibly make a profit if the variety proves popular. So if someone develops a new variety of uh, uh, soybean, for instance, um, they may well have spent millions of dollars in research and development costs to develop that new soybean. By getting a patent on it, then licensing the production of that soybean uh, to others, they can recoup that money that they've spent. Some companies exist primarily to create new varieties in order to license them and don't ever actually grow the plants for sale themselves. So another industry created. Risks or issues with plant patents. Many farmers in the U.S. and most farmers elsewhere save seed from a crop to plant the following year. If the plant is patented or has the plant variety protection, it is illegal to save the seed and replant it, forcing the grower to purchase new seed every year, increasing the cost 
to the farmers. Um, doing certain types of research on patented plants can also be, be illegal, which can prevent scientists from doing things like comparing plant varieties or testing the efficacy of plant resistance to diseases or insects. Um, there's a link here to uh, a New York Times article uh, that gives more information on uh, research and plant patents. And biotech seeds, finally. Biotech seeds are the result of everything we've examined in this unit. Traditional breeding programs and genetic manipulation to develop better, which means bigger, more, longer lasting, more nutritious, less expensive food. The benefits of using such seeds, the risks of using such seeds, and how such seeds can impact the economy the farmer or the grower, or the company that patents them, the nation and the world. Remember that most farmers save seed and replant it the following year uh, with patented plants. That's, that's illegal. Um, the available technology and body of knowledge about such organisms and their long-term effects on the environment is actually very small. And the political and economic forces at work, when Politicians depend on being reelected, and the companies spend millions of dollars lobbying for preventing labeling of genetically modified organisms. There's both a political and economic force at work. Also, the money involved in having genetically modified uh, organisms and biotech seeds. Um, simply in that, there's a lot of money involved. It's a complicated subject. I encourage you to get further educated on this one. It's going to be a big deal in the years to come.